Okay, we're talking about 7.2. Uh, we are going to, in 7.1, we started solving equations, uh, just general uh, single variable linear equations uh, provided by uh, me, provided by the textbook, provided by my math lab. Uh, today, in 7.2, we're going to attach real life types of pr problems to uh, algebraic equations. And then we're going to use the skills that we've learned previously to go ahead and solve those real uh, life problems. Okay, so first thing we have to do is we have to uh, state a problem and then we have to translate the words, the phrases in the problem into our mathematical algebraic symbols. All right, so usually there are key words and phrases in a verbal problem that translate into mathematical expressions involving addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Uh, you might want to write these down. These are handy to have. Uh, go ahead and pause. Uh, I'm going to move through them fairly quickly, uh, but like I said, pause if you need to. Uh, I'm not going to, uh, you know, just sit here on the video and take time. So, uh, addition. Words that mean addition to us, okay? So if we're given a verbal expression, the sum of a number in, uh, in seven, uh, in a previous chapter, we, uh, section, we talked about the word sum, S-U-M, as meaning plus. So if we hear the sum of a number in 7, we're going to add 7 to a number, but how do we deal with some number that we don't know? Well, we make it a variable. We can make it x, we can make it n, you can make it whatever you want, whatever you prefer, t, s, p, whatever you want for that number. And 7 means we're going to have x plus 7, a number, the sum of a number in 7 would be the mathematical expression. Three more than a number, you see more than in bold, that would also indicate addition. Plus, we know as addition, that's first grade stuff, that's the first way you learn to add, you hear the word plus, plus, plus. Okay, ten added to a number, a number increased by two, and then of course the sum of two numbers now means that two numbers are unknown, so now we're going to have use two variables, x and y uh, suffice. Alright, so that's the operations uh, for addition. For subtraction, subtraction uh, is a little bit more difficult. Addition is pretty straightforward. Subtraction, especially, especially sorry, especially uh, this one right here, less than a number, okay? Because typically when we hear less than a number or when we're not experienced in seeing less than a number, we typically write 3 minus x, 3 less than a number. And that would be incorrect because, as we learned before, the order of subtraction matters, okay? And if we're taking three less than a number, we have to take three from the number. And so we have to put the number first and take three away from it. This will be the one that's most commonly missed out of this whole section, this idea of less than. Anytime you see less than, take the number from something else, okay? Don't do this. Don't do 3 minus x. Do 3, le er, three less than a number is going to be x minus 3. Uh, 15 minus 8 is pretty straightforward, re reading it left to right. 1 subtracted from a number. That's more direct. Uh, that's the same as that 3 less than a number, except the language is <coughs> tells us it's from a number. And so if it's from something, we, we understand to subtract it from that number. A number decreased by 2 is pretty straightforward, and the difference between two numbers, that's that word difference. We know sum is addition, difference is uh, subtraction. So if you see the difference between two things, you're going to subtract them. Okay? Multiplication is pretty straightforward. We know all the language for, uh, sub, uh, for multiplication. We know times. Notice there's no symbol here for multiplication. 7 times a number is just 7x. Uh, a number multiplied by 3 is just 3x. Notice that the number comes first also. So even though number multiplied by 3, we're not going to put x3. Okay, that doesn't, <clears throat> that's not going to work well in our math language and in our equations. So just keep the, the number first and then the variable, so 3x. Even though the number is then multiplied by 3, that would be 3x, okay? Two-thirds of a number, we know of means multiply, uh, two-thirds x. Twice. Uh, means two times a number, and then product, just like sum is addition, difference is subtraction. Product means multiplication. So if you hear the product of two numbers, you're going to multiply them. 
Uh, anytime they're variables, we don't need to have the multiplication symbol. If you feel comfortable, you can have a dot there, but uh, x times y is just xy. Okay, uh, you might see thrice. If you see the word thrice, uh, sounds like twice. Thrice would be three times, okay, um, just in case. Uh, and then the last one is division. You're not going to see a lot of this. We don't hear the quotient of two of a number very often. But notice when we write the expression, we write it as a fraction. Okay, anytime you're going to do division in an equation, write it as a fraction, meaning don't write two divided by x. That's more of like a third grade, fourth grade elementary school uh, way of thinking. Uh, now, in our equations, we have to write division as fractions. Okay, it's just a lot nicer and neater and works out better for us. This uh, doesn't. Okay, uh, a number divided by 3, x divided by 3. And then the ratio, you're going to see this in your homework, the ratio of two numbers or the quotient of two numbers. Pay attention to this term ratio. Uh, write it as a ratio x over y. Okay, ratio of two numbers. And where here, don't worry about these parts too much. This just means that if our variable is in the denominator, uh, and our denominator cannot be zero. X here cannot be zero. Y here cannot be zero because if we divide by zero, it would be undefined. So it's saying we want things to be defined in our math, so we can't have undefined things, so we can't uh, have zero in the denominator. Okay? Uh, just a little review. The symbol of equality equals uh, is the word is. Anytime we see is, we're thinking equals. We saw that in the percent problems. Uh, previously okay so uh, guidelines here and you can write these down I'm gonna go quickly through them pause if you need to uh, these are just steps in the process uh, some of you may know them some of you uh, these might be new if they're new please take the time to go through these use these use them as a guide okay these this is a good guideline uh, if you need to so solving uh, an applied problem, and by applied problem, they're talking about a word problem. Okay, first, read the problem carefully until you understand what is given and what is to be found. Uh, people who don't do well in math, uh, sometimes they give up a little bit too easy. They don't give themselves enough credit. They think that they read it once, or maybe they just skimmed it once, and they go, oh my god, it's four sentences, I can't do this. I'm not smart enough, and they give up. Okay? I read, I teach math uh, for a living, and I read most problems multiple times, okay? So you should be, okay? Uh, and, and especially up in uh, some of the upper level math, I'll read uh, problems seven, eight, nine times just to get to understand. Math problems are very dense, okay? Very dense. You run into things like uh, four less than a number, and that means you have to translate that, okay? So you're translating... So you have to take the time to read. Assign a variable to represent the unknown value. Anytime you have a word problem, there's probably an unknown value that you're trying to find, which would be your solution. Assign a variable to that solution. Use diagrams or tables as needed, and if necessary, express any other unknown values in terms of the variable. Then write an equation using the variable expression. Use your words, translate it into equation, solve the equation, and then five and six here, uh, make sure you do, especially five, state the answer. Okay, when you solve, you might come up with an answer, but it not, might not answer the question. Okay, so state the answer to the question. Don't just solve the equation. It gives you an answer, but then you might have to use that answer to actually answer the question for the question. Okay, and then step six Check the answer in, in uh, the words of the original problem, meaning you can know, just like in 7.1 solving equations, you can know if you got the problem right uh, every time, which is very powerful. That's very cool. Okay, make sure you check your answer to see if it works. If it doesn't work, go back to the drawing board. Let's look at uh, an example. A fenced area contains a total of 74 hens and roosters. If there are 24 more hens than roosters, find the number of each. So maybe you want to read this again. We've read it once. Read it again. What's going on here? Sometimes I like to draw a picture. We have this fenced-in area. We have hens and we have roosters. Okay, And we know that combined, they equal 74 little animals. 
Okay, that's a good starting spot. All right, hens and roosters are 74. Okay, so we read the problem. We're looking to find the number of hens and the number of roosters. We're going to let R be the number of roosters. That makes sense, R for roosters. But we don't want to leave hens in terms of H. I just drew a box that says hens plus roosters equals 24. We're going to talk about the roosters in terms of R, but we need to also talk about the hens in terms of R. Well, we know that there's 24 more hens than roosters. That tells me there's 24 plus R equals the hens. 24 more hens than roosters means 24 plus R. However many roosters there are, there's 24 plus R hens. Okay, so that's going to lead us to our hens, which are 24 plus R, plus our roosters, R, equaling our 74 little animals. And now we have an equation. Okay, we have an equation here. R plus R plus 24 equals 74, so we don't actually, there's nothing going on with these parentheses other than when we substitute in, we put them there. So I don't actually need them anymore. So I have R plus R, those are like terms, so now I have 2R plus 24 equals 74. Remember back to 7.1, we want to keep our variables on one side, numbers go to the other. So 24 has got to go. It's plus 24, I need to subtract 24 to get rid of it on this side. That means I have to do it to both sides. So now I have 2R equals 74 minus 24 is 50. Uh, 2 times R, I want to get R by itself, so I'm going to divide. That's the opposite of multiplying. So I divide both sides by 2, and R equals 25. Okay? It asks me, though, now here's that part 4 where it said solve the equation, then part 5 says answer the question. R equals 25 solves my equation but does not answer my question because the question asks to find the number of each. I found my roosters. That's great. The number of roosters is 25. But to answer my question, I have to also say how many hens there are. So make sure you do that. Well, if there's 25 roosters and there's 24 more hens than roosters, then I'm going to take 24 hens plus my 25 roosters, and I get 49. So there's 49 hens and 25 roosters. Okay, so there's the part where you got to make sure that uh, you go to step 5 and answer the question. Don't just solve the equation. And then step 6 says go ahead and uh, check. Is the sum of the roosters and hens equal to 74? Well, I have 25 roosters, 49 hens. That's 74, so we're good there. And... Are there 24 more hens than roosters? Well, if I have uh, 24 roosters, 49 hens, or sorry, 25 roosters, 49 hens, that's 24 more, so we're good there too, okay? So we know we got the problem right. Money problems. You're going to see this a lot in the My Math Lab and on the test. Problems that involve different denominations of money or items with different monetary values are similar to mixture and investment problems. We're not going to talk about the mixture and investment problems. We're just going to talk about money problems. Okay? Money problems. Think about money. You take the number of coins or the number of bills times the value of them to equal your total value. Meaning if I had three nickels here sitting on my table, I wouldn't say 5 plus 5 plus 5 is 15 cents. Maybe I would, but if, if I had a lot of them, more than three, I would just say, well, I know each one's a nickel, and I just count the nickels. One, two, three. Three times five is the total value. All right, so these pro money problems are going to follow how we count money. We take the number of items times the value of the item. For example, if you have nine quarters, you're not going to say 25 plus 25 plus 25 plus 25 plus 25 and count all nine. You're going to count up how many quarters do I have. Oh, nine of them. Nine times 25 cents is 225. Okay. For a, let's look at an example of how we're going to solve uh, a, mon a money problem. For a bill totaling $5.65, a cashier received 25 coins consisting of nickels and quarters. How many of each type of coin did the cashier receive? Okay, now it helps to come up to do a table. Uh, step uh, previously in a, in a slide, I said sometimes tables help. Create a table here to stay organized. And we're going to create a table uh, that looks like denomination, number of coins, and value. We're going to take the denomination, how much is each coin work, worth. We have our nickels, we have our quarters.
Okay, our nickels are worth five cents, our quarters are worth 25 cents. How many of each coin do we have? I kind of skipped a little bit forward. We know that there's 25 coins, okay? Uh, and if we let the nickels be X, okay, then it should make sense that our quarters are going to be 25 of the total coins minus the nickels, minus X, okay? It should make sense that if we let X be our nickels, we assign it a variable, X nickels, then our total coins minus the nickels has to be our quarters. All right. Now again, we take our denomination times the number of coins to get the value. So they just took 0.05 times x to get a 0.05x. They took 0.25 for the quarters times 25 minus x to get the value of the quarters. Okay. We still end up with our total number of coins of 25. Okay. And then our value is 565. And what we can do is go ahead and add up our nickels and our coins, or sorry, and our quarters, to get our total of $5.65. Now we have an equation that we can work through, okay? 0.05x plus 0.25 times 25 minus x equals $5.65. Now remember back to the end of 7.1, we don't like fractions or decimals. I'm going to multiply all of these times uh, 100. To get rid of the decimals, that gives me 5x plus 25 times 25 minus x equals 565. Okay, Better than working with decimals. Now I'm going to go ahead and solve. I have to go ahead and get rid of the parentheses and distribute first. 25 times 25 uh, is 625. 25 times minus x is minus 25x. Now I have to simplify this. the left side. 5x minus 25x is minus 20x plus 625 equals 565. Letters on the left, got to move the numbers to the right. So I got to subtract 625 minus 625. Get my calculator out. 5, oops, 565 minus 625 is minus 60. So I have minus 60 here. I have minus 20x here. So now I divide by minus 20. And x is going to equal 3. Okay, x equals 3, but what was x? Well, x was my nickels, so I have 3 nickels. How many quarters do I have? Well, if I have 25 coins, uh, 25 minus the 3 gives me 22 quarters. 22 quarters, 3 nickels. Okay? And then, of course, you can check. You can count up your money. 3 times 5 cents plus 22 quarters does give me 565. 3 nickels and 22 quarters is 25 coins. Good and good. Uh, that's how you need to go through these problems. Make sure you're checking at the end. Uh, again, this was 7.2, translating words into symbols, creating equations, and then solving.